This is Abe Friedtanzer from CinemaDailyUS.com, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Idara Victor and Jessica Lowe about their roles in the new show, Minx. How are you both doing today? Great. Great. Wonderful. I'm doing great. Thank you. (laughs) What attracted you both to this show? All right, I'll start. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I love the writing. I think that it was just really smart and funny. And I love the way that the characters were written. I thought they were all written in a really um, specific way and addressing different sort of archetypes of the 70s, but not just the 70s now even. Um, but uh, all of them were really funny and written really strongly. And I thought it just created like a nice ensemble. Yes, I love an ensemble workplace comedy, and this one is not like any other I had ever read. Um, And I just, yeah, I thought our creator, Ellen, just did the best job creating this world and making it seem really grounded. And I just thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure I would have described it as an ensemble workplace comedy, but I like (laughs) I like the idea of that. I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> if we're going from, you know, we had the office a while ago and yeah. now we have this, I think. That's, now we have Minx. Thank you, know. you. And I hope we have the same number of viewers. That'd be great. Exactly. That would be lovely. Yes. <laughs> did you have any apprehension about the subject matter? Did, did that, that scare you at all going into it? Honestly, not for me, um, because of, because it is really truly a workplace comedy, even though it in the porn industry, um, I, I felt like all of the sexuality was handled in a way that just seemed so cheeky and kind of fun that it felt like uh, really universal. It just felt like it could be, I could, you could talk to just about anybody about it and, um, and they could watch it and you wouldn't feel uncomfortable watching it with your grandmother. So yeah, I, I, I felt pretty safe with it. I'd say the only thing I felt nervous about was my character is very free and um, uh, comfortable with her body. And I had been panic eating throughout COVID uh, (laughs) and only wearing very bulky sweatshirts. And so transitioning to next to no clothes was just a shock to my system. (laughs) But they like eased me into it and it was very respectful and everyone behind the camera was a woman. So I never felt like um, too exposed. That's great. Yeah, I I do think both of your characters are underestimated by people and not expected to achieve what they can. And I like that. Um, I think that Bambi, especially, she's somebody who underestimated. Come on, Abe. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let let let's start with with Tina then. I think that she is someone. She really is the brains of the operation and what may be the most uh, sort of equitable relationship on the show, I think is the one that she has with Doug. And that's really interesting because I don't think you expect that going into it. Yeah, totally. I mean, I wasn't even expecting it going into it. It was something that was like slowly building into the show. And um, I absolutely, those were some of my favorite scenes to shoot were the scenes with Jake um, and what, you know, the, that sort of, quiet relationship that Doug and Tina have that no one really fully knows about. Um, And um, the honesty that they have with each other and the fact that they've known each other for so long and they built this thing together. It's like, they just know all of each other's secrets. And um, I really love the way they were written and I love shooting those scenes and I love Jake and I just, I love Doug and Tina. (laughs) Yeah. And when for for Bambi, when it actually came out most for me was when she's talking to Joyce and Joyce is trying to quiz her on the, you know, history of feminism and the ideas of feminism. And she responds in a way where she doesn't quite get the facts right, but she completely understands the idea. And she wants to represent that she has this intelligence that it may not manifest the same way as other people. But I I think I really like that. I think she has an emotional intelligence. She also might have a little bit of PTSD from living in a cult for many years. So <laughs> I, I think she's definitely underestimated and she has un- underestimated herself and uh, working with Joyce and Tina has sort of made her realize that it's not a terrible thing to have a little bit of intelligence. Right. And not just like, like using your body as a, like a commodity. Right. Did you have to do any research into the era or into the world of these kinds of magazines? 
Well, I know Ellen sent me a couple Playgirl magazines. Yeah, I was like, well, that. look what came in the mail. <laughs> it's a nice, a nice package. Um, but yeah, we got a few of those. And um, yeah, I, I hadn't even known that Playgirl was um, progressive in that way uh, at that time. I thought, I just kind of thought it was like the sister of Playboy or something, you know, but I didn't realize that it was seen as radical and sort of feminist even back then. And, um, and so that was a nice, like quick intro into the world of it. And yeah, I did a little more research to like understand the era, understand like what role a person like Tina might have at that time. But Tina was written in such a unique way in that she had a certain autonomy in that space at bottom dollar that she just wouldn't have had in a lot of other office environments. Um, and she had that relationship with Doug that was so sort of free. Um, so I, I just kind of went with that once I saw the way, the direction that we were writing in. And I was like, of course there were, of course there were relationships like that. Of course there were position, job positions like that. And, and um, I'm happy that our show shows that. Um, and what was the process of making this show during a pandemic like? How did that make it different from other projects? Well, there's a lot of testing. Um, yes. <laughs> a lot of testing, but, um, we had as many things up our nose as a lot of people in the seventies. <laughs> we exactly. were shooting this, yeah. this nail swab Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's weird because you, it, every day you get to work and you run these like very, um, specific, true to the time, vintage pieces. Like everything we wore was vintage and, um, they like put, they put this like smoky haze in the air when we get to our set and everything looks so realistic, but then you look around and then there's all these grips and sound guys wearing masks. It's, yep. it's like a, it's like a weird push and pull being like, Whoa, this is like the groovy seventies. I mean like, right. Oh yeah, we're in the middle of a pandemic in 2021. Right. Exactly. Like, like we're at a time when we really can't touch each other, but we're doing a show about sex and it's like, so yeah. even that freedom of just like, oh, I just want to hug you. I just want to, you know, it's like, you, you don't have that same level of freedom to do that. Um, so yeah, that was a weird like dichotomy that we had to navigate. I'm sure. Well, I don't think it shows much in the show. This is really a very entertaining and, uh, and terrific show. And it's great to be able to speak with both of you about it today. Thanks Thank so much, Abe. Of course, the first two episodes premiere on March 17th on HBO Max. Best of luck to both of you in the future. Thanks okay. so much.